Hey guys, and welcome to episode 51 of Dad Knows Best, a show with a couple of daddy o's, three kids between us, and a whole host of banter. I'm working on that intro, guys. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> I am Harrison Mudge, one of your hosts, co hosts. Uh, I'm out of practice because we didn't do a show last week, obviously. Um, to my right, Adam Callow, father of. Three, two, one. <laughs> How do you get so bad at this after just one week? I'm a creature of habit. If I don't do something within like seven days, it's like I've never done it In before. future, <laughs> even if we don't record, come and practice. Just, just come and just do the intro. So you have to put these lovely people watching oh, on the YouTubes. Sorry I'm shuffling, by the way, because my, the arm of this chair... Is catching the bottom of this mic. Don't get me started with these. I've got this thing down here that stops me from pulling in close. I know, this table's like a banana. Um, It's rustic. That's how they sold it to me. It's (laughs) fucking rustic. It's character. It's not smooth, it's character. That's what they tell me. The fact fucking family built it is another story. (laughs) (laughs) It's like when you go into an antique shop and it's just like an absolute nail of a chair that's just they found in a skip somewhere. It's like, oh, it's, it's like a, you know, it's an 1800s chair. It's got character. Hey, chair people will be like, <laughs> it is an 1800s chair that has got character. That is a, there's an original. You're just uneducated in the chair space. It's that's an original the uh, 1930s IKEA. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking uh, about, mate? Well, today, uh, so quick update on the baby, actually. I spoke... Yeah, like two weeks ago now, um, did a solo show. Uh, have you listened to it? Nah. Have you watched it? Nah. Okay, I'll give you, I'll give you 20 minutes. Go watch no, it. No, no. I, I, <laughs> so it's on my watch later on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Because I actually, I think that probably one of the best places to consume it. What I'm saying is like, I, I we love for, podcasts. For anyone we run a podcast listen- network. But for someone to get the most of you, <laughs> I think YouTube is the way. Yes. Because... I think you're undervalued from a from a social <laughs> perspective. I think you're really getting into your character. I'm enjoying it. I think what you're actually saying is I don't come across well on audio only. You need to see the visuals to you do really need appreciate to see the visuals. Yeah, I'm better on audio. I know that. Just audio, no video, much happier. Um, you're you're a video guy, like. So well, I appreciate that. Head over uh, to face YouTube. Face for video. Face for video. Yeah. Yeah, it's a compliment, right? Yeah. So yeah, head over to YouTube. Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> See, I just knocked my And if iPad. you're just listening, you have no idea what's happened. I rest my and case. It, honestly, <laughs> we, we've just recorded another podcast and everything went swimmingly. I don't know why everything's literally Fucking gone to shit. shit <laughs> when we hit this show. Okay, what are we, uh, do, what are we Right, I'm going to keep my hands in a safe place. Baby update. Um, How's yeah, that? so... <laughs> so crawling is really kicking in now. He's just everywhere. He's fast, mm-hmm. he's fast. Like it's amazing. I said it on the uh, the, the previous show. Like pivoting, you can like a, a baby's length in a pivot doesn't sound like a lot, but it's the difference between like being in a safe zone and then all of a sudden he's hanging off a cupboard and there's like delicate things. <laughs> <laughs> and that if was you your were watching <laughs> you know Adam, what just happened Adam just fell through the floor um, have so you, you baby proofed the house yet no that is that is on the to do list um, hopefully a bit of a priority it's, it's really scary because you, like, and I don't know if anyone else's house is like this but like it's like we subconsciously think okay as an adult let me put all the dangerous stuff waist level and down so like <laughs> All the bleaches, all the all the big heavy sharp objects and things like that are just all in reach of a child mm-hmm. that is uh, mobile. Well, yeah, we don't so, think we don't think about that stuff until we've got a kid but that n- grabs the knife. <laughs> but there's not enough shelves higher up, mm-hmm. so there's going to be a real issue because like, where do I put my bleach now? Where do I put the washing? Well, powder? You, you get those little things that you stick on the doors that make it baby proof to open. <laughs> Yeah. That's the stuff. You're going to end up with all these little is clips. It, is it bad? Oh, my eyelid. Uh, is it bad that... Uh, <laughs> everything's going wrong today. Uh, is it bad, though, that I look at those and think, oh, I don't want them on my cupboards, man? <laughs> no, it's not bad, because I we the, we didn't are, get them, to be honest. They look damn ugly, and yeah. they're a pain. And when you go on and, and, and they the stick cupboard, on as well, right? Yeah. And, like, it, they'll stick on with that good sticky shit, that 3M stuff that just doesn't come off. I'm sure they've got... I'm sure they've got one... Well, I try not to carry 
<laughs> and then I remembered that you don't edit the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I nearly looked at you and went sorry Harry, because in the other show I can yawn and you'll edit it <laughs> this one no such benefit I was like fuck we go in. I mean, I mean if something if something went horribly wrong I would edit the show but I <laughs> like this, this <laughs> I need the, the thing is this will this will go live because otherwise it'll have been two weeks before a show's gone out okay, so yeah, cool so just by the, the fact that I need to stay consistent it means um, that everyone's gonna see it everything that's happened today on the youtubes um so let's let's i'm sure they do ones that don't stick and bits like that it's just i know it's a faff but do you know what's a bigger faff buying new cupboards sticking them on a wall and then moving your bleach up to that oh i i thought you were gonna say i thought you were gonna go serious and go what's more of a faff is taking your child to a and e after his guzzled no, gallon no. Of i didn't want to say that it was implied, I guess. A little bit. <laughs> you said it for me. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, let's but try. I was, let's I was just, moving. Yeah, he's moving, okay. um, and I think uh, I'm trying to think where I put it. I'm not sure if I put it in. I either put it in the podcast episode where I was talking about it, or it was on a playmat video that I did. But I showed the footage of his very first bit where he starts crawling, and from what was very sort of shaky is now like it's a it's amazing how a day on day day on a daily basis <laughs> the english language is getting away from me today on a daily basis how much they progress yeah. like motor skills wise like it goes from like sort of kind of crawl into all of a sudden now he'll just he could he can crawl as as long as he wants to and he because he was already if you lifted him and held him he'd already stand right and mm -hmm. like hold his weight but obviously he couldn't get there before now he's already pulling himself up on the sofa and uh dan who was in uh the office on tuesday he he was saying that, uh one of his kids was walking by like i think like nine months it's crazy so and Elliot's just turned nine months. So I'm probably going to go home tonight, and he'll meet me at the door. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Dad. So, <laughs> son, where? Why have you been to work? <laughs> why are you in a suit? Oh, dear. You watch Boss Baby? I do. Yeah, oh, I like I, Boss I, Baby. You watch the the? You mean the series on Netflix? I watched well. it all, man. Yeah. 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 It's so, on loop in our house. Honestly, I come out every morning. Yeah, the and only issue, the the um, what's the term I'm looking for? The juxt juxtaposition. I don't think. I don't think that's the quite the right word. Basically, when you watch the film, it's Alec Baldwin, mm -hmm. but when you watch the series, it's obviously not. So it was just a bit jarring initially to go from one yeah, voice to another because just he's trying it, to. He's trying to imitate. Um, it. Yeah, he's trying to emulate it a bit. But when you have it on loop, I don't think you my kids are used to it. <laughs> yeah, it just could be anything right now. Yeah. Just, so we have but, Paw Patrol on. Fuck that. Mm. Fuck Bob Patrol. Yeah. Unless you want the sponsor of the podcast. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> Advertising is such a fickle game. <laughs> uh, well, you know. Um, yeah, so kind of nothing else, but I just, I'm really, I didn't realize how quick they will walk mm -hmm. from crawling. Uh, we, we were watching babies on netflix as well it's a, a docu-series about babies and learn the first days developing learn to crawl learn to walk and you see you see the moment where some different kids learn to walk that moment where they just like are on one ledge and they just look over and then they just take some steps, steps. and then move across and all of a sudden they've got it it's like holy shit yeah that'll just happen one just day. learning machines at that age yeah man. Yeah, terrifying. Anyway, so that was just a quick update on the old Bambina. Um, but last time I did, on the last episode of Dad Knows Best, I spoke about a book. And we've spoke about this book as well, The 60 mm -hmm. Minute Father. It's a real book. <laughs> I finally got round to reading it. So I had it, I've had it for, uh, yeah, two weeks. I've had it for like two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I've read it last night <laughs> <laughs> Brad in one sitting in one sitting so that that's a testament I mean for anyone that's watching they can see it's not a thick book um, it's like 90 pages and it's and interestingly as well so I just wanted to kind of have a chat about that because I know you've read it as well right yes um, so like I assumed um, in the previous uh, podcast it was just kind of, the gist is like maximizing your time with the kid. And interestingly enough, from conversations we've had and obviously kind of learning from 
lessons that you've learned and mm-hmm. situations that you've been in and how you've realized, oh no, I'm changing certain things. So I've learned a lot from you already, which are, I assume, actions that you took away from this book mm-hmm. or just things you've figured out yourself. I'm kind of ticking, or I found that I was ticking a lot of the boxes that it's talking about, at least on, on a on a out a, on a scale of one to ten, at least a five or mm-hmm. or, or a bit better, which which is positive. But something that actually, um, so I won't go into every single thing that it goes on there, but it's just things like. Um, it's easy to trick yourself like, oh, we'll do it tomorrow and mm-hmm. things like that with them and um, just like try and seize the opportunity you get with them now because obviously kids are growing up, like we're saying, the kids are growing up so fast. Elliot was this thing that couldn't move unless you held him mm-hmm. and now when you hold him, he's trying to crawl off oh, of way. you. Yeah, yeah. And like, even that, I know he's only trying to crawl to go and get something because he's interested, but it's quite a, it's a little bit emotionally like, upsetting in the sense that like wow he's i'm holding you from falling and yet mm-hmm. you're willing to just crawl over my shoulder and try and reach for a light bulb yeah it's the first little bit thing of independence in the child yeah. that's what you see and like that is they, uh, that grows very quickly and being aware from what the book said and things like that and being aware of that makes you realize oh wow this is like a, this is just a taste of, this is how i feel about him not wanting to be held right mm-hmm. now that in if if I don't try and make the most of it um, now, I will definitely. I can see how you can look back and think, "Fucking hell! What, like it was so easy to just do something. Why didn't we do it?" Um, so yeah. So some of the things I'm already kind of conscious about, which I'm happy about. What was the stuff in here that you weren't consciously thinking about that you now will implement? Um, so some things I've not necessarily been able to do there's yet. There's a lot of pages folded in here. It's, yeah, so there's like so it's cool because um, there's different con- there's different goals. There's ten goals, yep. and then they give you some examples of scenarios of different parents uh, and how like they made a mistake or how they or how how you can prevent that mistake from happening and achieve a goal. The action points are things to consider. And then there's even like a 60 second wrap up of mm-hmm. like just some little one liners that sum the whole section up. So I was, I feel like I'm kind of consciously aware, maybe not actively trying to achieve all mm-hmm. of the goals, but consciously aware of some of them. Some I can't do right now because it's like if your kid wants to talk to you or play with you, make sure you're 100% focused on it. And I'm kind of doing yep. that with Elliot while he's rolling around and stuff, but he's not super interactive with me as a person so mm-hmm. much as the thing that I'm moving in front of him, whatever. So so that one will evolve as he gets a bit older. Um, but the one thing that really kind of made me stop and think, oh shit, I need to actually really think about that. And it's not as parent focused necessarily, mm-hmm. But it, it was, I'm trying to think which one it was. Um, I'm sure you could find it. But it was about the idea of, so what the, the main thing that really hit me is when, he, when it said, it's very easy to be busy. Mm-hmm. And we all, for some reason, have a habit of making ourselves busy for busy sake. And like, there's an example of like, oh, I've got so much on today. I've got, so, I've just like so much to do. And we joke in the office about I'm so slammed and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And I'm like, show me to do this, and this is better paper. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I've just figured out. <laughs> uh, and one of the examples it has is like this: this some guy John mm-hmm. who's um, who's put off a report that should have been done like two weeks ago. He's procrastinated and put it off. And funny, I was speaking to Sam actually about procrastination, so it's all kind of hit home at the same time. Um, so he put this report off, and then could have done it in the morning on the last day it needed to be done for the deadline didn't do it in the morning because he allowed other things in the day to get in the way. And then he had to pull an all nighter in the evening, cancel on a thing with the family and complain that he'd been so busy all day. When in actual fact he hasn't, he just didn't optimize his time and prioritize. Then it compares it to uh, George Bush, president of America at the time was up at four, was at some summits and things Mm -hmm. like this, doing all these meetings was here, there, and everywhere, and then was home for dinner with his wife and playing golf yep. in the evening. And it was like, which of the two were busier? It's not It's not quite clear cut to say one was necessarily any busier than the other, but it's sometimes about organization and prioritizing what is important because 
you can just we talk about it a lot on a different on our other show but you can be a task monkey and do a lot of things in a day but if you've not achieved what you're trying to achieve you you can just kind of work and work and work and then there's busy no, full there's no and interestingly there's no deadline when that happens either because all these things just need to be done and then you end up um just like thinking well I'm just going to stay late and get all these things done. But there's no like, it's just like a nebulous deadline. So I realized, and I urge anyone that, um, I urge everyone to actually give it a read because it's uh, it's quite an interesting book. It, mm-hmm. it, like I say, it's super quick to read through. But for me, it made me think that I need to rethink my, my week because I kind of got into a subconscious routine thinking that I'm doing everything in the week and then spending the weekend with the family, which I am doing, which is great. Mm -hmm. But that's a very black and white divide of Monday to Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. What I realized that I actually need to do is I need to get a bit more granular on a daily basis because I think I can still do everything I need to do, but better prioritize the hours of the day that I operate within. So... One of the things I I personally probably need to do more of is plan ahead, for example, either on a Sunday, plan my week, or at least in the morning, spend more time, what are the key things getting done? Mm -hmm. So that, for example, I leave at five without fail, Mm -hmm. get home for half five and have the evening. And then I could, in theory, do the same amount of work in the evening after the kid's gone bed and, Mm -hmm. and, and just get that done at home. What... And it was you'll have to read it, but one of the one of the state one of the sentences in there was was about just that is like we for some reason we're a culture of just like putting the hours in at work, just being busy for busy's sake, but really like have you have you achieved what you needed to achieve? And, that, and I was like, yeah, sometimes I kind of I'm doing a lot, and then I've or I've. Or we, we, yet, think, we think a lot of input and not output. Yeah, and the worst, that's, I guess, that's one of the key things is we think. I guess we're trained to go and guilt kicks in as well. It's like, I need to be busy because we're trained to be busy to provide. And we tell ourselves all these Mm -hmm. narratives and then we think, Oh no, but I can't. And this is a big learning for me from the book. And if you look at from what you just said about organizing your day, you see my calendar like, yeah. uh, And that's not an OCD thing. That's a, from a prioritization point of view to what you say, it's, what stuff I'm going to put in my calendar that's like non-negotiable. Mm-hmm. So 30 minutes with both my boys in the morning and work out. Did that since COVID kicked in. <clears throat> Used to, or still do, have 30 minutes or 20 minute phone call with the boys. If I'm away, wherever I'm in the world, I'd have a non-negotiable bit of time where I'd call the boys up and say goodnight. So wherever I was, meetings, whatever, I'd always step out of whatever I'm doing and say goodnight to the boys. And that came from that because it's sort of like, on a Sunday night prioritize your week what's important to you and what happens it's like gas in a room it's like when you put gas in a room it'll expand to fill the time so you have to put these constraints in and you'll naturally just get more stuff done stop stop all the procrastination uh, and you'll be more efficient because you know actually I've, I'm with the boys in the morning and I've got to get back for four o'clock to yeah. do this with the family <clears throat> and when you start to put these non-negotiable bits of, I call them non-negotiable so like put them in your calendar it's weird how everything else falls into place. And then you prioritize stuff as well. Yeah. You get much better at that. And and for me, the main thing as well is, and, and it was it was so funny because on, on Tuesday, I was literally, I can't remember even how the conversation came up, but I was speaking to Sam um, about about procrastination. And like that is self-inflict, that, what that ends up being is self-inflicted busyness, right? Because you keep putting something off to the point where you can't anymore. But if you're not careful, and this is what this is, the book was trying to say, is that if you're not careful, you'll end up spoiling uh, or mi- missing out on something very important that was re- really, if you look back, it's probably your own fault for missing it yeah, because you, could have avoided it. you yeah. created a non-negotiable that overlapped with a kid's school play, for example. Yeah. Whereas if you'd have just got that done two days earlier, you wouldn't have had to have stayed late. And that that for me like isn't really an issue right now, but I realize that there are sometimes situations where I'm like, oh, I've got to do this now. Cause admittedly, maybe some of it's down to lack of motivation that it's only when it's down to the wire, will I get it done? Because mm-hmm. I will get it done. Like I, I always make sure that I deliver, 
but pro- I have, and it's like been school reports as well could try harder <laughs> but yeah I just need to be a bit more proactive to make sure that I don't allow um I don't, I don't force this busyness to uh, mm-hmm. rule my life because I because I, I think that and I it's weird because it's almost like one of them catch 22 well, not catch 22 but it it kind of it's a bit of a circle because because I don't necessarily have non-negotiable non-negotiables in the calendar well, I've then got a free calendar to allow this busyness or yeah. allow this procrastination to push things back because I've got nothing else to do tonight for example so I can stay up all night and I can finish this task because mm-hmm. I've got nothing else to do whereas if I actually said well well, no, because I need I I have to make sure I leave the office by five because we've got family time and dinner, and then kid goes to bed, and then I go to the gym in the evening, and then I can do some work. That if that was if that was hard booked out in the calendar, maybe I'll think, well, shit, I've only got like mm-hmm. two hours in the evening for the next three days for me to finish that project. Maybe I need to make sure that I get it done ahead of time because otherwise I'm having a late late night. Yeah, so. that, having those non-negotiable calendar for me uh, give you constraints to work to, yeah. which is healthy uh, because uh, w- without that, like you say, on a daily basis, you are letting people down, whether it's letting work down, letting yourself down, letting your family mm-hmm. down because you're trying to juggle too many things. And the th- my, my biggest failure in the past was, still a bit now, um, saying yes without thinking it through. Yeah, I'll do that for you. Did it the other day with mm-hmm. Joe from GH. Um, I was like yeah I'll do that not a problem and I was I got off the phone I was like I've just said yes casually and it's an hour and a half's work yeah. I don't fucking have that time to just well, support and, that thing and, and again literally in the example it, it does I, I found the spot the guy's called the guy's called Joe um, and it, and like the example is someone pops their head in the office and say oh can you help me with this and the guy's like yeah sure it, he shouldn't have said yes but whenever, and, and one of the things it says is like, whenever someone says, can I borrow you for five or can, could you help with this? They're, they're stealing your time, right? They're interrupting your workflow. Yep. So I need, I need to get, there's like a bunch of things. Weirdly, this is, that was the biggest thing I took away from the whole book, but that's, I need to like get better at planning out my day, locking in non-negotiables in the calendar, like you say. Um, and also in that example of like people asking for things, I think that the easiest thing is just say, can you put it in my inbox? Because then you can tackle it in your own time. If you go, cool, yeah, let me let me stop what I'm doing. Let me just completely pull myself out of flow. And you tell me what you want. Mm-hmm. It's not your fault. You've just come over and asked a question, right? But if you don't create that barrier or boundary with other people, it's kind of your own fault that well, you're I think, allowing I, I things to I think the first stage in. is send me an inbox I'll look at it when I can get to it mm-hmm. and if you go no I actually need it now you, the, the the phrase that I'm trying to use more is I would love to but mm-hmm. like hey can you can you help me with this <clears throat> Joe on the call the other day could you just follow me Joe I would love to but if I say yes to you I've got to let this other person down and I've already made mm-hmm. that commitment you know I would love to but right now I can't so I can't say yes that's yeah. that's the th- and there's, there's l- these little tools and hacks I guess a takeaway from the book for me was one of the big things was uh, kidding yourself a little bit in terms of what you think matters so yeah I want to provide for my kids like I'm going to work hard now so when they're 15 they're 18 they're 21 they're whatever I can build enough air quotes success mm. to provide the lifestyle I want for them and it was like well when you get older and you look back, are your kids going to remember that they got a PlayStation 7 for their birthday? Maybe. When they say what really matters when they're 35, 45, 60 years old, they go, fucking, I went camping with dad. Mm -hmm. And when we were together, it was priceless. And he focused on me. Or we had this weird tradition where he'd come in at night and he'd be the tickle monster when I was a kid. Like these things are the memories. And when I read it, I was like, oh, that hurts a little bit because I'm sort of like saying... I'm using that as an excuse, I think, in my head. I don't think there's any... Yeah, it says about, like, we seem to... We we live in an age where we value gifts so yeah. like he goes son here, here's this thing when it, and they, they might it might be the it might be the new playstation whatever wicked but when they grow up they won't remember mm-hmm. the gifts that you used to get they'll remember 
dad used to buy me something because he was going away or, or whatever that dynamic yeah. is. Um, and when you think about what you can spend your money on, right? Money we can, this is the thing for me is we can make more money. We can lose money. We can, money is this commodity. Mm. You spend time, you ain't getting it back. Yeah. Like you never get it back. So I was like, okay, cool. And it really hits home with me because Reggie is <clears throat> even now. So it's happening this week, happened yesterday morning. He would ask me and say, daddy, can I show you this? And he's asking me while I'm in the middle of something or doing something. And I would, I've gotten that, but I keep saying, not a problem, Reggie, in a minute. Mm -hmm. And he's so polite and so kind hearted. And I noticed the other day his bottom lip went. She was just like, and I realized that what's happening is when Riley needs my attention to help him with his laptop or whatever he's doing, I kind of jump up and do it because I don't, well, I actually don't know why I do that. Uh, and I think Reggie's sort of like, why aren't you giving me that time? Mm -hmm. And it's these subconscious little actions that I don't realize I'm doing. And I guess it's because what Reggie's trying to show me, he's just trying to show me he doesn't need me to do something or fix something for him. Riley needs my help, whether it's on coding or whether it's setting his laptop yeah. up. So I'm like, oh, he can't carry on until I help. So I'll help him. But he's just trying to show me a character on a Lego game. I'm like, cool, Reggie, give me five minutes. I'll be with you. So I'm still trying to get that back in because it's like these tiny little micro things that will build up yeah. and it will sort of like suggest to him what's important. So now I'm like, it's interesting you reading that now because I'm like really aware and coming back to it a little bit. Yeah, like on, on that, it's like things like just take a second to acknowledge and, and, and use that as an opportunity for in that scenario, for example, to st stop what you're doing, acknowledge him and then explain, I'm busy now, Come, mm -hmm. like let's, 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 let's have half an hour later but use the opportunity to actually acknowledge in the first place so so yeah it was um so yeah just an, like, i mean the, the main thing for me i was able to read it last night mm -hmm. that like <laughs> i'm a real slow reader and when whenever someone goes because <laughs> we've got a book club thing i i opted out from the word go because if it was meaty i've just i really struggle to like get through books so for 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 me to recommend a book I think that if you struggle with reading, like not because you can't read necessarily, but yeah. because you're slow, like I am, like I, I feel like a, I feel like a two year old trying to read out loud. I think you wouldn't say I'm a very deliberate reader. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a deliberate reader. Do you know what I mean? So I really enjoyed it because I read it deliberately, but I was still able to deliberately read it in one night, I think is the main thing. But I would, anyone that's got kids or looking to get kids or anything like that, I definitely recommend it just because it, it makes you aware of concepts of like just give them attention now because we because we now as you get older you're like yeah we'll sort it later or whatever but you don't realize mm -hmm. that the the thing it's kind of trying to say is like the most important part of anyone's existence is the first few years of the life because because it, it also quotes someone as well it says everything I, there's like a book or something called everything i learned i learned in kindergarten Dunno. So like, so like when you're one or two, whatever, so you literally learn everything. Mm -hmm. I'll have to find it. I'll see if we can find it, but we'll, uh, we'll close the show up now, mate. Um, but, but I think I'm actually interested in getting the physical book because one thing I like about that is you folded the pages over and don't get me wrong. If people listen to this, we haven't done it justice in terms of the impact it makes because I think everyone will take different things away from it. Like for me, it was about me trying to provide in the future and delaying time with them now. Mm -hmm. Change that. Non-negotiables in the calendar. That was my big takeaway. And you'll have your big takeaway. And everyone else will have their own big takeaway. But I think I'm probably going to buy the book and then do what you've done. Mm -hmm. Take the pages out. I'm probably going to like, or just once a month or once every two months, just sit and just, because you could literally go through the action pages in five yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah, you can scrub through. Definitely. You could literally just go through the action pages in five minutes and just touch base with yourself and go, well, am I actually doing this? Um, probably going to do that, actually. Cool. We'll leave it there, guys. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Uh, if you want to get the book, I'll put a link in the show notes of the podcast and the video. Uh, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe in all the places that you receive this audio visual goodness. If you want to get in touch, email dadknowsbest at nbs.fm. I feel like I got the sign off better than I got Way the opener. Way better. Way better. <laughs> I'm like, he's finally warmed up to this. Only took 30 minutes. See you later.